We have persons that claim to be Pan-Africanism. Do they really represent Pan-Africanism? Do they really represent Marcus Garvey? Now, to my knowledge, Marcus Garvey himself was a Christian. Now, to my knowledge, the Universal Negro Improvement Association was black people coming together not only not only those who were under Marcus Garvey himself but those who decided to come under one umbrella different organizations but they were willing to come up under one organization and that's why Marcus Garvey movement was so big because it was more than people following Marcus Garvey, but it was the people coming together, uniting on some similar ideas and circumstance. So that's the reason why Marcus Garvey, the UNIA had about from one, 1 1.5 to 2 million registered brothers and sisters in that organization. Marcus Garvey was a Christian. And he did not try to force his Christianity on nobody. Matter of fact, most of us don't even know that Marcus Garvey was a Christian. He believed in Jesus Christ. He believed in Christ. Marcus Garvey. Okay. Marcus Garvey embraced our diversity. Marcus Garvey was not trying to make all of us the same. Marcus Garvey was looking for the liberation of a people. Everybody in the, in the Universal Negro Improvement Association, they were not Christian like Marcus Garvey. But Marcus Garvey understood our diversity and he worked with our diversity, our differences. Why do you want to force people into your religion? Why do you want to force people into your ideology? Shout out to Sister Tangy and her son, Josiah. Sister Tangy was on the platform with, with us a few days ago. And I wanted her to come to the platform more often and speak with us. And I will even say, honestly, I sort of got a little angry with Sister Tangy, you need to, you know, you need to come and spend more time on the live streams and blah, blah. I got a little upset, a little angry about it. I can be honest. <clears throat> but what this, what did Sister Tangy say? Sister Tangy came to us and she said, I'm not ready. 
when I come and talk on the platform, I want to be a, a good example to those I'm talking to. I don't want to come to your platform drunk. I don't want to come to your platform high. I want to, I don't want to come to your platform smoking. I want to come to your platform the best I can be. I'm not ready. And the difference between myself and many other people is I can wait till you're ready. I never went to her mad and upset. Well, you, you know, sister, you, you said that you like Angus Nup Nup 7 and blah, blah, blah. You have to let people mature when they feel they are ready. And some people may never get ready, but they can still support the effort. They can still support what you're doing, but they don't have to be who you are. They don't have to believe what you believe. There were Muslims that came to me all the time. Brother, you need to come back to the nation of Islam. Well, first of all, I should never have been a Christian. I should never have been a Muslim. These things was forced on my mind as a child. I should never have been these things should never have been brought to me to begin with. So, I should never have been because the belief in God is unnatural. Religion and spirituality is unnatural behavior. A man, a woman has to teach us those things. <coughs> If a human being don't teach you about spirituality, if a human being don't teach you about God, it won't come out of your mouth. It's a learned behavior. It's a, con a conditioned behavior throughout the centuries. If you don't teach a child about God, if you don't teach a child about spirituality, they will never bring the conversation up. They will never tell you, hey, mama, I seen some kind of transparent ghost looking thing they will never come with you like that these are taught behaviors demons and spirits and goblins and ghosts this is a taught behavior it's learned behavior it's unnatural there's nowhere in the natural world where you see a goat want to pray to some god or an ant want to pray they just come here live their life and die and it's so arrogant in religion and spirituality because you was born a human being, you're not gonna die. You're just gonna transition to some kind of gas, some kind of other unexplainable element and go to another, go to another realm or, or, or to another planet. Well, one thing for sure, your happy ass is not gonna be here no more. And if you was foul on the earth, if you was a fool, profane, nasty, greedy, dirty, low down, dirty, savage on the earth, wherever you go, you're going to be the same. What's going to change you? You was low down and dirty, living on the earth in flesh. And when you go to the other realm, when you go to planet X, when you transition to the, into conscious energy, you're still going to be a damn fool. The only good thing about it is we won't see your dumb ass no more. Bye-bye. Put you in the dirt. Bye-bye. Most of us, most of us will never be remembered again. I know my, my grandmother. My grandmother had a full house at her funeral. 50, 60 people or more at my grandmother's funeral. 
I can guarantee you, nobody, nobody has visited her grave since 1989. I can guarantee you. Nobody talks about her. Now, I remember her, but these future generations, they don't know about their, their great-grandmother. They, they don't mention her at all. They don't know. But see, we believe in religion and spirituality because we can't handle the reality of life. Like, who cares? Nobody knew about you before you was born. So who gives a damn if nobody knows about you after you're dead? Who gives a damn? But some of us, some of us trip off of that. So we turn to religion and spirituality. It's got to be better. I can't die like this. Life, life, life is this all to life? If, if this is all to life, I might as well be dead. So they are attracted to the lies and the delusions. Personally, I don't care. I didn't know nothing about this life before I got here. I could care less after I'm dead. We concentrate, we concentrate so much on the afterlife that we don't spend any time enjoying and understanding the life that we actually know and have. We too worried about dying and the afterlife and how, how did the earth come? Who gives a damn? We are here. Learn how to live, learn how to love other human beings. Learn how to have appreciation and respect for the earth and animal life and the grass and the trees. We're going to make this last point and we're going to get out of here. So Pan-Africanism is not a religion. Pan-Africanism is an ideology. And Pan-Africanism simply is melanated people in Africa and around the earth come together and unite. That's all. That's the simple definition of what Pan-Africanism is. It has nothing to do with your morality. If you're a vegan, if you're a meat eater, if you go to church or don't go to church, whether you believe in Egypt, it has nothing to do with none of those things. You don't have to take my word on it. Go on the internet. It's very simple. Pan-Africanism is simply the unification, the brotherhood, the sisterhood of melanated people. That's all it is. All this other stuff, that's not what Pan-Africanism is about. And from my, from my reading and research on Marcus Garvey, that's not what he was about either. But you have those who are Pan-Africanism call themselves Pan-African, they want to tell us about our morality, tell us what to eat, what to do. But here they are, the white man this, white man that. They spending their money on sport and play. TV sets, the latest ele electronics, going to baseball games and Thank you.